Your next decision will make or break your crypto portfolio. The time has come where you need to decide, are you going to be taking profits or adding more to your position size? In today's show, we're going to discuss what I'm going to be doing and a whole lot more. So make sure that you smash the like button, hit the bell notification and subscribe to the channel. And without further ado, let's get started. We'll start off over here with the banter bubbles, which you can see is red. It is red. So I know there might be a lot of fear within the market. A lot of people potentially looking to take profits within these zones, fearful of the top side of the ascending parallel channel, which we are hitting right now. I'll bring that up in a moment, and I'll show you what happened the last time within the cycle we got to this level. So smash the like button, hit the bell notification, and subscribe to the channel, and then vote in the poll section. I want to know, what are you doing next? Let's quickly get the votes in before I build the bias for what I'm doing. Uh, what are you doing next? Taking profits or adding more? more to your position size everybody very very quickly go through to the poll section and vote over there um, and then we will start to build the case for what i think comes next and what i at least plan on doing uh, let's have a look at how the weekly is looking for the top 100 coins a couple of these strong ones are moving towards the upside you have vet over there which had an absolutely monumental move yesterday it was an up only mode we have stacks remember that stacks is a beta play to bitcoin when if you have the thesis that bitcoin is going to go up and you want to hire beta play without using any leverage feel free to trade stacks right when bitcoin goes up stacks goes up even more but when bitcoin pulls back then stacks pulls back even harder so something worth noting now i think what i have it measured on over here is actually against bitcoin so let's quickly change the currency pair back to usd and get a more realistic picture of what the usd market looks like so all in all very very good right on the weekly on the daily about half and half and on the hourly well most of the coins are pulling back also against their usd pair so we have a lot of the votes in over here very very interesting results over here um it did slide come back into balance because we were sitting at about a 70 30 split over there what you're doing next taking profits or adding more well a lot of people will be looking to take profits into this region one particular reason why is because we're hitting hitting that upper boundary of the trend channel right uh and if you look over here at Axel, he does identify the trend correctly in the sense that he says, well, if we break through that, then we're probably going to rally straight to $65,000, which is your multi-month long rectangle top, uh, which was set in the prior bull market. And we are breaking into that territory. But if you look at what happened in the prior cycles, it's definitely worth understanding the uh, way that these charts play out within cycles right because it's one thing to just put a resistance trend line and start to short that it's another thing to start to consider how it fits in with the rest of the timing cycle and if you look over here this shows you what happened the previous time when we came into the top side of that parallel channel it was 1200 days since bitcoin broke out of the parallel channel and it left people in the dust prices back then which was over here was fourteen thousand dollars and rally towards the upside 1200 days exactly before that and the timing is so precise on bitcoin it broke out of the parallel channel from 1500 dollars and also rallied up pretty aggressively towards 20000 or just below 20000 where we set in that 2017 cycle top so are we following the exact same pattern? That's the thing that we need to be looking at today. And the trend is your friend until the end of that trend or until you see bearish divergence or until you find other signs and symptoms of weakness. So I thought, well, we should definitely look at what some other signs and symptoms of weaknesses could look like. And we'll get into that in a moment. Signs of strength, though, it's going to be the ETF flows the volume results continue to incline big pushes towards the upside so the total volume for the nine different etfs came in at 1.4 billion now i also want to bring up ethereum in a moment to showcase what that means for ethereum right uh, if you look at ethereum which has a much smaller market cap and you consider what these etf flows have done for bitcoin already driving that spot volume towards the upside driving the spot demand towards the upside and consequently there's been a massive amount of buying pressure then you have to wonder well what will the effect be on ethereum which etf approval date is just under three months away we're getting ever 
closer towards that date. I'll show you as well in today's show what's happened with Ethereum. There's some uh, notable changes which are taking place, which I think every single one of you out there need to be paying attention to. So let's continue on over here, looking under the hood of is this move overheated and is it time to take profit? Uh, is it too frothy within this market? Let me know in the comments, is it too frothy? Also guys, smash the like button. It really helps to get the show content out there. Um, and then if you are brand new to the channel, I really recommend chatting with the guys in the comment section. They'll let you know that we've nailed every single step of this move for more than, it's about two years now. So subscribe to the channel so that you can get the alpha every time it comes out. Now, one thing that we can look at to determine is it frothy is it overheated we can look at the aggregate uh, open interest so how much leverage is coming onto the table and have we reached those extreme extreme levels now you expect that the open interest with within this cycle if you look over here should get higher than the tops that we saw within 2021, right? Because that's the way that the a growing asset class works. More and more market participants come into the market and more leverage comes onto the table, which means you should have significantly higher open interest. And you can see we're nowhere near those levels, right? So we're getting close to where we were at the 2021 tops, but you expect it to blast off right through this level. And I wouldn't consider this overheated by any means. Maybe once we start breaking out above this open interest level, Level, then you can start to say, okay, cool. Maybe now things are starting to get a little bit heated. The other thing you can look at is the funding rates. So you can look at the uh, funding rate average, and then you can look at the uh, predicted funding rate average on the bottom over here. And both of them, let's look at the uh, first one over here. If you look over here, nowhere near, right? Nowhere near those 2021 peaks. This shows you when the, when the leverage is getting too heated within the market, and usually you see strong flushes towards the downside. So yes, the market is net long. Majority of market participants are running longs right now. There are a select few who are trying to play shorts, but the question is, are they really trying to go swing short here, or are they just taking a little short as a hedge against their longs? I would say it's the latter. Most smart traders and investors right now, the shorts that they're taking are head shorts in the event that you get a major pullback. All you then need to do is bring your short stop back down into the profit zone. And then you have a free trade and free insurance plan against your longs, right? So the majority of the market here is net long right now. If we also look over here at trading light, I don't see any major, major sell orders coming into play. And I have checked all the different order books over here. You can look at uh, Binance, you can also look at uh, Bitfinex, see what's happening on Bitfinex. Are there any extreme orders over here? No extreme orders on Bitfinex either, right? Uh, there's a couple of different other exchanges that you can look at. Uh, you can look at, um, let's go to see if they have on, uh, it's only the ETH pair, so I'm going to leave that out. We don't have it on uh, on Bybit over there, but on Binance, which is the biggest exchange, and um, Bitfinex, it looks to be okay. If we also look at the liquidation levels, below or at least where the heat maps are in terms of the major stop losses which have been placed on both Bitcoin and Ethereum. We have Bitcoin on the left-hand side, $35,000, but you can see the bright yellow is slowly starting to dissipate and disappear, which simply means that those players are giving up on those limit orders which they've set for the lower prices and the stops are constantly being raised and that's why the heat map is starting to change color. For Ethereum, it's around that $2,000 mark. Ethereum, of course, trading all the way up now at that $2,000 $800 mark, meaning they're giving up on those low prices and forced to chase price higher. And that creates those FOMO moves, which leads to the extreme blow off tops at a later date. The supporting evidence over here, in line with what we're looking at on Coinalyze, we can use Coinglass to also see what's happening with the funding rates. And is it overheated? Well, not according to this, not yet, not yet. So, is it time to take profit or add? I guess that's the question. Well, you know exactly what I've been doing. I've been adding to my positions, making them bigger and bigger, dollar cost averaging into these trades over here. Uh, the ones that are red are the ones that I've recently just started to scale into. And of course, the market is slightly pulling back. So those are my later entries. The earlier entries are up astronomically, 30%, 50%, 280%. Uh, we have 15%. We have a whole lot of different orders in place over here. All of them have been dropped in whale room. Um, and this is the plan of action that I'm going with. And I'll 
show you why. I'll, I'll build the case for the reason why in just a moment. I need to bring up what's happening with Bitcoin dominance as well. Now, macro Bitcoin dominance is very, very strong over here, breaking out of a two-year range, reclaiming the 200-week moving average, backtesting that low region at 50% as support, as well as the 200 MA on the weekly time frame, And that's showing you trend continuation, looking at a greater move. But of course, you can zoom in and see what's happening on the daily time frame as well. And is there a possibility for a little bit of an alt rally? Well, there is, of course, there's always a possibility because at the moment, if you look over here, this would be your potential local top, right? So any small pullbacks that take place within this region for Bitcoin dominance, if you get a little bit of a rejection over here, those small legs towards the downside, um, although they don't change the macro outlook of what's happening on Bitcoin dominance, lead to quick little pops in the altcoin market. And that gives the bulls, the altcoin bulls, at least the chance to move price. And it could lead to a bigger trigger in line with what's coming up for the Ethereum ETF, right? Because if you look over here, this is the case, right? $4 billion worth of net inflows took Bitcoin from a price point of $46,500 to $52,000, right? Okay, 19 0.6 million Bitcoin uh, times $5,500 equals a $108 billion increase on the market cap, a $108 billion market cap increase as a result. Uh, this took Bitcoin from a $1 trillion to a $1.1 trillion market cap. Now, this should blow your mind. If you understand, if you can put the dominoes in order and you understand exactly what's taking place here, ask yourself, what does that mean for Ethereum? Should the Ethereum spot ETF be approved? And ETH's market cap is $340 billion. And sometimes ETH is deflationary. Let me know in the comments, what does that mean for Ethereum? Could this be a narrative that will quickly start catching steam? Well, I think so. Price usually moves first. And then they start to build the narrative around why price is moving. And then it creates a snowball effect, which leads to obviously much, much higher prices. So that's something to look at over there. And you have Ethereum, which is playing out our target over here. We have just a little bit more to go. Of course, we're calling this ever since the bottom over here. I'm sure you guys remember me explicitly and often saying that this low region over here is so similar to Bitcoin when it was at $25,000. Everything looked to be doing the same thing over here a refusal to break down the bulls continue to defend defend this level uh like they were on the enemy line okay within a war on the enemy's line defending that level to the to the absolute end and Consequently, prices started to move towards the upside, and there's no guarantee that you'll get a pullback down to the low region at about 2,450 to re-enter. This thing could just continue straight on onwards and upwards, meeting our intended target, uh, which is another 16.74% move for Ethereum. Now, if that does take place, of course, altcoins are going to rally, and that is part of the reason why I'm personally adding more to my positions, I'm betting that that's going to be the likely outcome. And the reason I'm dollar cost averaging into that position is in the event that Ethereum does actually provide that pullback and you get a little bit of a back test into that $2,500 level, which was the prior resistance zone, flipping it now into support, I have additional capital which I can reallocate into other altcoin positions and continue to scale in, right? So that's one thing that I'm looking at there. You also have the uh, ETH, uh, BTC ratio over here, which is showing small signs of strength and hope for the bulls that it could potentially reclaim this. Now, remember the way the narrative starts to build. I just gave you one example of how they could build into this narrative. The other example would be that uh, the talk of how ETH is more scarce than Bitcoin, uh, more deflationary than Bitcoin, that will start to come back onto the table at a later stage, right? Okay, looking at Renko over here, what does Renko say? Because Renko removes a whole lot of noise. What is Renko? Renko is a Japanese candlestick uh, um, uh, chart pattern technique that you can use, or not chart pattern, but at least candlestick uh, approach that you can use, which keeps it super, super simple. You put on the daily time frame. When it's green, you're long. When it's red, it's risk off. Uh, and it's as simple as that, right? So if you look at Bitcoin over here, it's fully flipped back green. If you look at Ethereum on the right-hand side, that's green. If you look at Casper, that's green. If you 
you look at Solana, that's recently just flipped green. And you can mark off on at least Casper and Solana on the, on the bottom uh, panels over here. You can see that they're pushing directly into their resistance zone. But based on what we're seeing across the rest of the market, should the expansion towards the upside take place, the volatility expanding towards the upside, then you expect the rest of these altcoins will move accordingly in line with whatever Ethereum is doing. And we can look over here at the volatility. We actually have a metric that shows us, and that's the BBWP on the bottom over there, getting lipped off, showing you that the move is only just starting on a high time frame. Now, it doesn't always happen that it just expands without coming back down. Sometimes you can get a little bit of chop over here. So I do have to make you aware of that. Sometimes you can get a chop on the volatility uh, in the same way that you would have got over here, right? You chopped around a whole lot after printing the vertical lines. And then you got the expansion. And that expansion led to an enormous move for Bitcoin from 26000 all the way to this $51,000 dollar mark right that was that move over there what about ethereum ethereum's low volatility which chopped around led to the move from 1500 all the way to current price levels at two thousand eight hundred dollars so it is looking good and we also have another new narrative that's building which i'm going to touch on in just a moment and that is sora i see you guys in the chat over there mentioning sora what is sora sora is the new AI tech that's just come out from Sam Altman. And what it basically does is text to video. It's going to displace a lot of the industry and it could be mean good things, at least for crypto. I can imagine how this could tie in uh, with crypto at a later date, but we'll touch on that in just a moment. Um, so stay until the very, very end. Let's see other supporting evidence over here. Bitcoin, at least if we look at the chart prime momentum oscillator over here, it is showing that there is still upside momentum, which is possible. There is a lot of gas left in the tank for the bulls. But keeping it simple and old school, which is focusing on strong horizontal levels, that's the most important thing that, in my personal opinion, you can do within trading. You can see we are coming into a very, very strong resistance zone. And we'll have a lot more information of what comes next when we see the weekly close. The weekly close, we're going to get the CME close today. The CME close will also provide huge information. That will be our first clue. That's what I told you last week. Last week on Friday, I said, let's look at the CME close. The CME close was powerful. It was strong. It was a full bodied green candle towards the upside, like we see this one over here. We then waited for the Sunday close and I updated the whale room community in Discord on Sunday. And I said, boom, that's it. We got the Sunday close. The Sunday close confirms what we saw in the CME Friday close. And that suggests expansion towards the upside on Monday. And that's exactly what we got. Look at the following week candle. That's what we've had since then. We had continuation with a pretty substantial move of 7 what percent as it currently stands and from bottom to top that was almost 10 percent move on bitcoin we know altcoins did even better so now we need to watch the same thing let's see if bulls can close price action above the current level you can see it's currently capped at exactly where my resistance level is marked off over here that being the range quarterly i'll make it nice and big there you go you can now see it nice and clearly that is the range quarterly right here at fifty one thousand. $873. If bulls can close it above this level, you might see continuation. Okay. Um, someone's asking, where or how do I buy moon? I'm not sure what you mean, sir or ma'am. You have to elaborate on that. I will also touch on the moon phases because I thought maybe that's what you were alluding to. We'll get to that in a moment. But if we close above this level, continuation higher, $60,000 does become the next target. If we start to close underneath this candle, then we need to observe what's happening next week on the open. And is there low time frame signs of distribution. If there's low time frame time signs of distribution, then this in fact could be a local top. We know that's coming into the key level, right? That being the between the 618 and 783 FIB retracement level. It's right in that zone where you expect a rejection to take place. Okay. Onwards and upwards continuation over here. Five day is showing the same thing and will provide us with similar information. If we look over here at both Bitcoin and I'll go into Ethereum and we use the Ichimoku cloud, you can see the Ichimoku cloud has had a bullish cross once again but more importantly i wanted to focus on this the uh 
average directional index, which is the blue line over here, and the DI positive and negative suggest that the bulls are in control of this current move. You have the DI positive rising towards the upside, and the average directional index is moving up alongside it, whilst the bears continue to lose momentum and strength. When we look at Ethereum over here, we see a very, very similar picture, right? ADX moving towards the upside, DI positive towards the upside, DI negative all the way towards the downside, but expect that this will converge back towards one another and that's where you see your pullbacks right as that converges back towards one another creates a little bit of a reset that's where you're going to set in your high low ethereum also has the bullish cross back on the table and that is looking at the daily time frame over there so all in all that's looking good another leading indicator that we had which if you follow me on twitter you would have seen i said coinbase's exchange volume is trending up just in time for today's earnings the pre-market for coinbase is showing that it's going to open seven percent towards the upside which is pretty substantial those earnings then came in and they absolutely smashed the estimates with Eight, with 953.8 million in revenue against the expected 826.3 million. Very, 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 very strong earnings. And consequently, you saw Coinbase rally off of that, uh, which is off the exact level that we outlined, right? We said, watch this level. You wicked exactly. I mean, you couldn't have a more picture perfect uh, SR flip over there. Look at that to the exact wick, what was prior resistance at 114.22 hit and tag that level at exactly $114.22 and consequently Coinbase moved towards the upside and I expect this to continue creating a higher high. So that's what we're looking at over there. Now more noteworthy than that is one of the biggest markets in the world, that being the S&P 500 futures over here and you can see the look of that candle, right? Bears were getting excited over here looking for a major local top which in all fairness, was possible because it is a bit of an overextended move. But bull stepped up, showing their strength, and that means that this move is much more powerful than a lot of people may actually realize. So if the stock market continues to ra rally towards these all-time highs with no chill, then expect that crypto will probably do something similar. Total three, doing what it's doing, consolidating and pushing up towards uh, at least new local highs within recent history. And we're looking at much, much higher prices in the months and weeks to come. Part of also why I'm very, very long on altcoins at the moment. Now we can track and trail over here in the event that there is a major pullback. You want to have your FIB tool on on the daily time frame, taking it from the swing low closing candles to the new swing high closing candles. I'm tracking it up. Remember, this is going to move up as price moves up. As it currently sits, your pullback levels or your target levels will be uh, around that forty-four dollars to $45,000 mark. That's your buy the dip zone should Bitcoin pull back. You still yet to break into the extreme greed zone. And extreme greed doesn't mean that you immediately sell. If anything, it actually means that that's where you see the real FOMO moves take place, right? You can see I've marked it off with the red line over here. We've yet to come into that zone. We keep rejecting and the fear and greed keeps resetting. So we went down to as low as 66 on the fear and greed. We back up to a 71 and it's something noteworthy to watch, right? Something noteworthy to watch in line with what you're seeing with the RSI. The RSI has broken into that bull zone and you can go look back on the history. When you see it break into these zones over here, that's actually where you see the big bull market rallies. So a lot uh, is on the line over here. The stakes are high and you need to play the market right. You can't afford to make big mistakes uh, within the market right now. There's a lot of money that can be made, but alternatively, if you don't know what you're doing, there's an enormous amount of money which can also be lost. So coming on to the moon phases over here, this would be an example of a failed signal. We said over here, the moon phases have been surprisingly accurate in that every time you get a bull moon, price goes up. A bear moon either leads to slight downside or consolidation because we're in an uptrend. And bull moon up, bear moon slightly down, bull moon big up, bear moon slightly down, bull moon big up. Bear Moon, this one led to quite a big downside. Now, there was a possibility that you'd set in a lower high here and have a reversal, but already before the Bear Moon printed, price already created a higher high. And consequently, I said to the audience, to all of you guys, uh, be careful, right? Be careful. Uh, just because you have a Bear Moon over here, it's, a, it's something to pay attention to, but it's not something that you want to go max short off of. Uh, you simply just want to observe what price action is doing. Now, this will come to an end 
and it will be met with another bull moon. How long? From now, you're going to be looking at the 24th of February, which is exactly how many days from now? The 24th of February is going to be, there we go, exactly one week from now, you'll get your next bull moon. So what does that mean? Probably if there is a pullback over the next week, you're looking to buy the dip. It's a trading opportunity uh, to add to your long position. The gray box marks off those key FIB levels, which are resistance zones right now. But if you consolidate in that resistance zone, it creates for a very, very good reset within the market and might give altcoins a breather, allowing for Bitcoin dominance to pull back as well right now all systems are go you have price above the pivot level the 200 ema on the one hour and the four hour time frame and your lowest support levels are coming in around that thirty-five thousand dollar level now this is starting to become one of my worst case scenarios my worst my worst case scenario is if price does come down and tag that 200 day moving average which is currently rising but at thirty-five thousand dollars this means the probability of buying bitcoin below these levels is decreasing with each and every week that Bitcoin continues to move at these levels. So I hope I've kept you guys safe. That's not the end of the show. We have a lot more to go over, but I do really hope that I've kept you guys safe. I hope that you guys have made a lot of money because I think that uh, I've been super honest with the way that I've traded the market. And personally, I've made a lot of money over the last uh, two years uh, because of you guys, right? Because I'm accountable to you guys and it makes my analysis a whole lot much, uh, a whole lot better, right? So I hope that, that the, that it's, uh, reciprocal and you guys are also doing very, very well out there. Now, if you are trading the low time frames and you currently swing long, this is probably where you'd want to have your stop losses in the event that there might be a little bit of a reversal taking place in the event that we're going for a deeper pullback. Your first warning signs will come on, you can say the hourly, but I'm just going to trail it on the four hour for less noise. I would probably have my stops here on Bitcoin, which would be currently at about $48,000. If you start to break that level down, so if you see something like this and you break that level down, set in a lower high, that might be your first sign uh, that maybe the trend is starting to actually reverse. And this could be a major local top. So that's for Bitcoin. Again, stops would be just below those prior higher lows. Uh, and that is going to be $48,000. As for Ethereum. Ethereum, I would have the stops over here at $2,500. Exactly the same thing, the prior high low. If you do start to break down, and there is a little bit of a leverage flush. I don't want to say that there's not high leverage in the market. We, we went over the open interest and all of that. I don't want to say it's not high, uh, high leverage. There's a lot of leverage positions that have opened. I'm just saying it's not high leverage that marks a major cycle top. It's not that type of leverage. But is it enough that could be flushed out of the market in the short term? Definitely. That is a possibility. And that is why you need to have a plan. Okay, let's move on. The AI is unbelievable, guys. The AI is unbelievable. Just to give you an idea, this is the text-to-AI um, video progress, the text-to-video AI progress from last year, exactly a year ago. Look at this. Will Smith looking like somebody that just came out of the hills have eyes. Um, it's not looking good, bruv. Will Smith not looking good. This is the new Sora model, AI model, which has just come out over here. Take a look at this. Literally, they wrote over here, uh, put a girl in a leather jacket with a red dress walking down the streets of Tokyo. And this is what the AI has reproduced, which is absolutely incredible. Coming from Will Smith eating spaghetti, looking like an alien out of the Hills Have Eyes movie. Um, this is pretty substantial progress. Now, if you look around, I mean, there are some things that look weird. Look at her hand is a bit strange. It looks like really elongated and weird. But I mean, to think how this is going to disrupt industries is absolutely unbelievable. Look at the reflection in there. They have to consider shadows. They have to consider all of these different things uh, when creating that. It's absolutely unbelievable. We're going to look at the AI cryptos in just a moment to see if the hype can, can follow through into Crypto, that will be great, right? OpenAI just dropped their Sora research paper. As expected, the video-to-video -video results are spectacular. Here's another example. Have a look at this one. Okay, what is that? A Porsche 911. Keep the video the same. Make it winter. Now put dinosaurs in there. 
Look at the quality over here. Change the setting to be a lush jungle space with a rainbow road. Absolutely amazing. Can you imagine? I mean, this is going to put a lot of content creators out of business. Um, I mean, if you anybody that, uh, for example, these stock businesses that sell sell stock footage where they send somebody out with with a drone to basically create something like this, you won't need those people anymore because you could just subscribe to this software and pretty much write your own story, whatever it is that you need. Look at that. Here's a guy sitting on the clouds. Look at this. This is a trailer for a movie. A trailer for a movie. Pretty unbelievable. Look, Woof Hat. He's got a hat on. Woof Hat. <laughs> okay, he has a bird. I mean, super four-dimensional. Look at these cute puppies. I have to show you guys this one. I mean, is that not amazing? How is this AI generated? I mean, this one, I can hardly believe it's AI generated. It just, it just seems too good to be true. So with that being said, this is not a show. There's going to be an increase in scams. Be careful. You need to trust uh, other sources to help to protect you. So it is one of the sponsors of the show, which is why I'm going to plug them, NordVPN. Of course, you get this for around two cents per day. Protect your crypto. The crypto scams are already sophisticated. I can't even tell you this. I actually had a friend. This is a true story. I had a friend who sent me a message saying that he got scammed by me. Uh, this is a friend that lives in India. And basically what they did is they created an AI uh, uh, bot as well that has studied my voice, the shows, everything. And they utilized that to send him voice notes or his family. He sent his family voice, note, voice notes and they took investment funds uh, as if it was me trading on behalf of them. And obviously they were rugged. It's gone. The money's gone, right? So use... A ledger, use NordVPN, use any means, common sense, protect yourself out there. Uh, check it out. Somebody's asking, was it Bombay Trillionaire? <laughs> no, it wasn't. He's not the only friend that I have from India. It's not, not the Bombay Trillionaire. Okay, guys, let's quickly look at AI. I just want to touch base on some of the AI. Let's see, is there any um, thing of interest? Look at AGIX, already a huge move over there. This is something that we brought up. Look at that. I told you, perfect, perfect back test for Ocean Protocol. Go back on the videos from two weeks ago. I literally brought it up. Bring the video up from Monday. I think I brought this up on Monday as well. And I told you the stochastic RSI is about to pick up. Had you taken that trade already, that is a 25% move. Pretty substantial. AGIX over here, exactly the same thing. Backtesting into the support level, and that is a 45% move. Fetch AI. And we went through this. I went through the AI narrative not so long ago. It was, I think, a week or two ago. And I told you guys, uh, this was based off of Sam Altman looking to raise seven trillion dollars and we said there must be something big coming i guess it was this we also said that imagine he even raises some of that capital uh the speculators will speculate and they'll move to crypto ai as a higher beta play and there it is as well perfect back test into the support level currently up 30 percent. and the craziest part is a lot of these altcoins look like it's just starting to move right it looks like it's just starting to move bombay is not from the uk i see there in the chat I promise you, trust me, I know Bombay personally, not from the UK. Okay, uh, this one's about a breakout as well. GRT is, if it starts to close the weekly above this level, you've taken out on a line chart. Look at this. You can quickly move on to a line chart. It'll give you a little bit of a better indication. You're going to start to create a new swing high. Onwards and upwards, it's going to be looking very, very good. So, Pay attention to that. We'll take some altcoin requests from you in just a second's time. Uh, also, I wanted to look quickly at the cumulative liquidation delta. Um, okay, it is up. It is up. Uh, still, one to four, long to short ratio. One short for every four longs. It's not that out of whack. It's not that skew. When this starts to reach 11 to one, then I start to look for major, major, major local tops that could be... Uh, basically lead to drawdowns for months to come. We're not yet at that level. Before we go into the altcoin request, guys, I also want to let you know that Redotto currently are giving you up to $10,000 worth of Redotto tokens up for grabs. That goes to the top that over there. Uh, you can get up to $10,000 worth of Redotto tokens, which I currently have staked on their platform right now as it is. Okay. 
very, very quickly, let's look at uh, some of the most important coins right now, at least. So Casper, I'm going to quickly go to Casper because you guys know that I've been building a long position over here. Uh, you can see that a lot of those orders got filled. There you go came into this area over here. A lot of those orders got filled. Watching this level carefully, you can see price rising. As long as it continues to grind into this resistance level at 1440, I would give it within seven days. Within seven days from now, I believe this will break out and lead into probably uh, around, I think it's about a 50% move. Okay, I probably have to go back to this one. Let's quick, let's check for you very, very quickly. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Casper, let's go. Let's go. Casper, where are you? Look at that. And again, I, I will get a lot more information based on the weekly close. I would like to see it move before the end of this weekly close. Starting to turn green, that's a 40% move to the next target, right? A 40% move. I want to see it move sooner rather than later because we have a big bullish candle from last week. And I want to see follow through with that. Remember, we started to establish those first longs just below 12 cents over there. Um, so I'm already up, but now I've upscaled that with leverage, taking an even bigger position over there. All right, guys, I'm going to have to end it over here. I'm truly sorry. I am streaming over here from home. Am I on the screen? Where am I? Oh, there I am. I'm streaming from home. The power's about a cut. Welcome to South Africa. Um, see you all on the next one. Have a great weekend and cheers for now, guys.